Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. We thank the Lord for another yes. still beautiful day, yes, even though we got a lot of snow. Yes. And this is the day that he has set aside to give him all praise, glory, and honor. For those who do have your Bibles, I will say that we'll be in 1 John, uh, second chapter. So that I give you some time to look for it as we um, have a little bit of praise and worship. 1 John, um, second chapter is where we will be on this afternoon. But we just thank God for being here once more, for another time or one more week that the Lord has allowed us to be here. We thank God that God's hand has been upon your life. He's been keeping you, watching over you. And God is yet showing his faithfulness. He's yet showing faithfulness in our lives, in your lives, because I see you're healthy and strong. It could be worse. Amen. But we see how good God is and how he's keeping us close to him. And he's desiring us to draw closer to him. So we just thank God for this time of fellowship. We love being here. Uh, Lady Burnett is here with us on today, so she's going to bless us also with um, a song after we open up and everything. So let's open up with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for today. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for your word and, and the worship and song that's going to go forth. We pray, Father God, that you are glorified through the songs. You are glorified through the word, Father God. You are glorified um, through the clapping of hands or the amens, Father God. We want to make sure that we, you are glorified in every way possible, Father God. We're so grateful to be here to serve your children, Father God, because they're your children and they belong to you, Father God. And so we pray, Lord God, as we go forth, that you are magnified, you are lifted up. For you said in your word, if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you, Father God. So we pray that your Holy Spirit flow all through this facility, not just this room, but because you're on my presence, Father God, we pray that your Holy Spirit flows all through this facility, Lord God, touching hearts of those, Lord God, that needs healing and restoration, Father God, touching those, Lord God, that need to be saved, Father God, need a relationship with you, Father God. And we'll forever give your name the praise, glory, and honor. Anything that acts in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 Come on and pray.
say amen as she comes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close.
welcome the Holy Spirit into this place. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God will move and God will heal and God will transform. Amen. So that's what I'm praying for every time. You have to believe that God can perform another miracle. Yes. I thank God that we are the first miracles. Amen. Because if you looked at our life before we accepted Christ, we were, some, we were jacked up, was, was we not? Amen. But the minute that God came into our lives, he began to work miracles. He began to renew our mind and transform us because that's what the Holy Spirit was sent here to do. Amen. And so I thank God for the Holy Spirit yes. and yes, his assignment. Yes. Remember, he has a personality. He has feelings. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. Yes. So we thank God for his assignment that he's given the Holy Spirit in the earth. Amen. Just as a reminder, I will be in 1 John, um, the second chapter on this afternoon. For those who still may need to turn to it, 1 John, the second chapter. And I, and I love all of the epistles of John because um, the uniqueness about John is most people take his, his compassion for Christ or his compassion for Jesus the wrong way. Um, mm -hmm. One of the scriptures talks about how John lays his head on Jesus' bosom, which is his chest. And so some people that are um, ignorant or, or unlearned or don't know no better, they would think that John and Jesus had something going on. But no, John wanted to know the heartbeat of God. Amen. He wanted to know what God was thinking about. And so that's why his epistles and, and his gospel is a little bit different than the Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's a little bit different. You can see some similarities in Matthew and Luke. But when you get to John, he has this revelation mm -hmm. of who Jesus is. Amen. He doesn't talk about his birth and all that kind of stuff, but he talked about him from the beginning. He gets this revelation that Jesus it was from the very beginning because he was the Word. Yes. And so John, in all of his epistles, he writes these letters to us to encourage us in the faith. Amen. He wants to show us the love of Christ and how for us to operate in the love of Christ. He wants us to know that God loves us and that we must reflect the same love that, that God yet showed us. But he says here in 1 John, the second chapter, he says, My little children, I am writing these things to you, talk about these letters, that you do not sin. Amen. He says, I'm writing these letters because I don't want you to get caught up in sin. Sin is designed to, to separate us from God. Yes. Sin is designed to, uh, to, to draw us to this, this, this pathway to death and darkness and hell. And so John is saying, I love you so much, and I have the love of God flowing in me that I'm writing these things, writing these letters to you, so you won't sin. So you won't get in the habit of... The, the very habit that God broke off Amen. your life. So we, before we accepted Christ, we had a habit of sinning. Yes. We had a habit of doing things that wasn't pleasing to God, but now that God is in our life, John is saying, I'm writing this thing so you don't get back in those habits. Mm -hmm. But he says, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate. Yes. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for his son yeah. Jesus. He's that advocate. He's that mediator. He's the one that we can go to when we, he says, when you do sin. Amen. He says, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Jesus was able to fulfill the law because he was righteous. And because of our faith in him, we are now righteous. Amen. Or we are now in right standing. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is the righteous one. Yes. He is the one that is without sin. But he took all sin. But he didn't have any sin. Yes. He took on that very thing that we were in. It says, verse 2, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He was Amen. able to pay that price. Nobody could atone us of our sin. Nobody could cover. Nobody could, could pay that price. There was a heavy price of sin. And Jesus was the only one that could pay, for that, pay that price. Amen. And he had to sacrifice his life to pay that price, but he was the only qualified one to atone, yes. be that atoning sacrifice. See, the other, well, when they did it in the Old Testament, those, those sacrifices, they didn't wash away your sins. But they remind, it was, it was done yearly to remind you 
of what you've done. And who wants to be reminded of their sin? I'm so happy that when I ask God for forgiveness, that he washes away my sins, that I don't have to think about it no more. That the reason why we do think about it is because we haven't forgiven ourselves. Amen. God said, I forgave you, but you got to learn how to forgive yourself because yes. I have already washed up, washed your sins away. Mm -hmm. okay. Amen. But he says, and not only our sins, those who believe, but also the sins of the whole world. Yes. There are some people that have not accepted Christ, nor do they believe in what Jesus has done. But Jesus said, listen, I came to die for everybody's sins. Because I want to give them an opportunity to eternal life. We that believe, we have an opportunity for eternal life. We have an opportunity for a relationship. But he says this in verse 3, by this we know that we know him. By this we know that we have a relationship with him. Yes. If we keep his commandments, if we keep his word. Amen. Keeping his word is just not reading it. Keeping his word is obeying it. Yes. David said, Thy word have I kept in my heart. I hid in my heart. Yeah. David wasn't hiding it. He was actually keeping that word in his heart. Why, David? So I won't sin against my sin against my heavenly father. And so we also must keep the word of God in our heart so we won't sin Amen. against our heavenly father. But he says, Whoever says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. That's right. Amen. So we can't say that we have a relationship, but we're still practicing sin. I did a Facebook Live on yesterday um, because it troubled me that we have a lot of people. God bless you, sister. We have a lot of people that say they're a Christian or say they're saved, yes. but they don't have no problem sinning in public. Amen. And God is saying, no, 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 no. If, if you're my son or my daughter, then I'm able to help you from stop sinning. Yes. Okay? I'm able, I'm able to help you. But we should never, as believers, feel comfortable just sinning in public. Yeah. Because that brings disgrace to the body of Christ. Okay? God is not pleased with that because guess what? We're supposed to be a light. So how can we be a light and we think it's okay to say we're a Christian, but we're, we're, we're just sinning in the public like it's okay? Yes. God says, shall we can continue in sin? Should, should our lifestyle be continuing in sin? Certainly not. Because then we can't be the light that God is calling us to be. Amen. But he says, whoever says, I know him. Whoever says they have a relationship with me and does not keep these commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. God says, I, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I, I am. I am means there is no other truth. Man. There is no other light that has come. Now the Muslims will say, uh, uh, what's the name? Muhammad was the light. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, no, uh, the, the light that came after me was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Muhammad. No. Buddha is not who we trust in. Mm -hmm. Confucius, Confucius was a very wise man, but guess what? Confucius got his wisdom from God. Amen. He just never gave God the credit. But it's us that believe in him. We should give God the credit. Yes. When he heals you, my sister said, she said her leg was hurting yesterday. Yes. She said she's feeling better now. Yes. So guess what? It's God is the reason why her leg is feeling better. Amen. 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 That's who did it. That's right. We should tell others about our testimonies. Yes. And give God the praise because God is healing you. Amen. God is making sure you feel better. Amen. God is making sure you get fed. He making sure you're clothed. You look beautiful today. Yes. And yes. guess who clothed you? The Father. Amen. All right? All right? He's the one that clothed you. He's the one that provides all that you have. Amen. And he brought you to a place like this so he can love on you. Yes. There was at a time where you was able to, God gave you the strength to take care of yourself. Yes. But now you don't have the strength maybe to take care of yourself like you used to. So God brings you to a place like this so he can love on you and take care of you. Amen. Who would serve a God like that? Amen. That is going to love on you. He's keeping his promise Amen. by loving on you. But he says, but whoever keeps his word truly has the love of God perfected in him. God is trying to perfect us every day Amen. in his love. The more that we love him, 
And the more that we understand that he loves us, he's trying to mature. When it says perfected, it's dealing with maturity. Amen. He's trying to mature us in, in love because God is love. Yeah. This is just who he is. Yes. He can't be nothing more than who he is. Amen. The scripture says, well, so God so loved the world. He loved who he created. Yes. He loved you so much. He said, son, you got to go down and die for them. Mm -hmm. You got to go shed your blood because only your blood is, go is going to uh, atone or wash away. So he loved us that much that he sacrificed his son that he can have a relationship with us. That's a beautiful thing. God loves you so much that he said, son, you got to go. I want a relationship. He created us in his image. He said, I want a relationship with the one I created in, in my image. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. So, but whoever keeps his word truly has the love of God perfected in him. Yes. By this we know we are in him. Whoever says that he remains in him ought to walk. Yes, amen. Now when we deal with walk, there's a path that God has for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we're talking about walk, we, we, you have a path down this hallway. Yes. That leads you to your room. Right. So God is saying, if you say you're in me, God says, I have a path that you got to walk. Amen. Now there is a scripture, I think it's in Proverbs, where it says there's a way that seems to be right. Mm. There's a path, there's a walkway that seems to be right, but it's going to lead to destruction. But Jesus said, the pathway I got you is going to lead to righteousness. It's going to lead to an everlasting life. It kind of reminds me of the first part of John's letter in the first chapter when it talks about sin. Watch this. It says, if any if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Yes. That the false prophet wants us to be deceived. To make us think that we're okay. Amen. He says, and the truth is not in us. Mm -hmm. We know the truth is in us. Based upon how we love. We know the truth is in us when we understand that we all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Okay. We know this. And I love this, as I said before. He said, if we confess. See, it's not that God doesn't know we made a mistake. Okay, that's what sin is. Sin is we transgress. Not that God doesn't know it, but mm -hmm. the confession is about the relationship. Amen. Every time you make a mistake, the reason why we say, Lord, I'm sorry, is because you've got a relationship. Don't, yes. don't you got, if you have a spouse or a loved one or somebody you really love, if you, if you hurt their feelings, what do you say? You say, I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. So it's so important that we confess, all right? Because there's healing and restoration through Amen. confession, okay? I didn't say confess to no priest. No, I say confess to the Lord. Now, it does say it's confess your faults one to another, but you can't confess your faults one to another with everybody. Some people can't handle your dirt. Some people can't handle your mistakes. Amen. But one person that can handle your mistakes is God. Amen. And we want to establish that relationship with him even the more. But he says, whoever says he remains, there's a steadiness in God. If you're saying God is in you and you are in him, we ought to walk the walk that he has for us. Verse 7 says, brothers, I am writing to you no new commandment to you, but an old commandment. Mm -hmm. which I have had from the beginning. Amen. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Yet a new commandment I am writing to you, which holds true to him and in you, because darkness is passing away. Yes, Lord. This commandment is all about love. Amen. The, 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 the commandments were simplified into two commandments. That you got to, if you love the Lord with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. But you got to first love God with all your heart, mind, and soul first. Yes. Because when you love him first, then he teaches you how to love yourself. Amen. See, you can't love somebody else if you don't know how to love yourself. That's true. No. It's God that teaches us through your relationship with him how to love yourself. God teaches you how to love him. Amen. Because he says, you've got to obey my word. You, you obey my word shows you that you love God. 
Because he says, what is it, John 14, 15, if you love me, you obey my commandments. Yes. Okay? So he shows us how to love. And once he shows us how to love ourselves, now we start loving others. Amen. But he says, as I come to a close, darkness is passing away. Yes. Listen, in other words, darkness has an expiration date. Listen, darkness is running out of time. Mm -hmm. But if we be the light that we're supposed to be, we're going to make darkness uh, uh, explain, uh, uh, expiring much faster. Amen. Just imagine if you allow the love of Christ to, to flow all through this facility. Yes. Whatever darkness was in here, got to go. Because whenever the light of Christ show up, darkness can't override it. Amen. But the light of Christ can. So he says... Whosoever says he is in the light but hates his brother is in darkness even until now. Amen. So darkness and light, they don't get along. Okay? Just like faith and fear can't, can't be in the same place. You know, if we was to cut this light out, it would be kind of dark in here. Would it not? Amen. But the minute we cut that light on, where that darkness go? It dissipates. It disappears. And so that's why God has us in the earth. Amen. For us to be a light. Because somebody needs Jesus. Yes. Somebody needs salvation. Somebody, like we did, need to come out of their sin. Amen. 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 Let's, we're going to have ask Pastor Mike to come at this time. Amen. Let's say amen as he comes. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. God is truly wonderful. We are here today to acknowledge that He's our God and our salvation. One thing the pastor mentioned in this conversation about Christians being called a Christian. I understand when we watch TV, we read the newspapers, and we look at stuff on our phone, we see things and people who say they're Christians and act like they're not. But they're actually through their other lives. If you are a follower of the word, you are a disciple. If you are a follower of Christ, you are of the way. If you desire the grace of a Christian, that's fine. But are you truly, truly following Christ? Are you being Christ-like? So that's the thing we have to make sure we have this, this distinction in that. Many call themselves Christians, but are they doing what Jesus would do? Are they acting appropriately? There are many things Christ would we know by the word he definitely would not do. That people who call themselves Christians are doing. People who hate. People who still fornicate, call themselves Christians, people still have adultery, call themselves Christians. No, not so if you are a true follower of Christ. So, yes, you may see, you may be confused sometimes when somebody on TV or whatever, I'm a good Christian. I hate the people south of the border. Why? I'm a good Christian. But I learn to like my own kind. My own only kind is human. Mm -hmm. Be wary of people who call themselves certain things and they're not. The Holy Ghost will reveal to you who is and who's not. But when you say you are a Christian, because you choose to follow the word of Christ. You're being Christ-like. And that's what God wants from us, to be like his son. His son came for us. He died for us. There's no sin that God will not forgive. Except blasphemy and Holy Spirit. And that you gotta be careful. That means that if you say something's of God and it's not, that's blasphemy and Holy Spirit. Don't attribute anything to God that's not Him. Do not do that. But God loves you so much, He sent His Son to save you, to redeem you for one more day. Today, today, we are alive today. Yesterday was yesterday, today, today. Tomorrow, we hope for tomorrow. <coughs> We know it's not promised, but we hope for it. We pray. We wonder, well, tomorrow we'll wake up like we woke up this morning. And be thankful that all we do from this hour on, God will bless. If people we come in contact with, He'll bless us. Because He died for our sins. God bless you all. God bless you. Amen. Okay, we'll have a prayer. We'll put a prayer out. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity in this place to come before your children. We thank God that you sent us as messengers 
to give your word, not from us, but from you. But we thank you for the people who are assembled here today, those who are watching us online, who will watch us later. Bless all those who call themselves sons and daughters of the Most High. Bless all those who know you and love you, what you did for them. That they not forget who you are and who you are in them. This we ask in Jesus' special name, amen.